Okay, I think this is on. Hello everybody, sources in the description box below. Just a real quick video. There's an article that came out, it's like breaking news. Trump is leaving Somalia for good. Like all his troops are going to be withdrawn, specifically 700 troops going to be right before Biden takes office, which is kind of funny in a really jacked up way, right? It's like his personal grievance against Biden is going to lead him to pull out troops and leave Biden with this mess. I think it's January 15th he's planning on withdrawing these troops. Real quick thing to throw out to you guys is do I take the stance that we need to withdraw from that area? Yes. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to change anything. What it sounds like it's going to happen and there's uh there's state department officials that are reporting this to New York Times is that they're going to reallocate those resources towards Kenya. Kenya and Ethiopia occupy Somalia. Sometimes they take turns and one occupies more and the other one occupies more. The United States is going to play an indirect role over there and more than likely going to increase drone strikes in Somalia. The dominant motivations for why people join extremist organizations in these areas is one, as a response to occupation, which is why Al-Shabaab was even created. It was created around 2007 in response to Ethiopian occupation. And number two, civilian deaths, which are oftentimes correlated with occupation. But in the sense I'm going to bring towards you guys is drone strikes. Once the US increases drone strikes, which has a 90% civilian death casualty rate, so nine out of the 10 people who are killed are civilians. Literally, like what I mean by that is, is when these things were reported and leaked, when you kill a target, it's called a jackpot. And then when you kill a civilian, it's called enemy killed in action. So they call the civilians enemy killed in action. Turns out almost everybody who was killed was enemy killed in action, which was actually civilians. Doesn't change anything. You're going to have people on the, the establishment left and the war hawks on the right say, well, we need to stay there for good. It's BS. There's conversation as to when we should leave Somalia because there's an election coming up, but regardless, we shouldn't stay there. No Somalia, excuse me, Al Shabaab, God, I can't talk, bear with me. Al Shabaab is not completely correlated to Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda barely even exists now. The connections that they might have might be like weird individual interactions once upon a time. Like, for example, there's a situation where there, there are people who are saying that they're connected, but in reality, there's somebody from Al-Shabaab and somebody from Al-Qaeda back in the day worked with the Mujahideen in the 1990s. And that was the that was the connection, which didn't end up being any more than they just had brief interactions and knew of each other, which I believe those two were probably dead at this point. So nothing changes. I wish it did. I'm in support of everybody leaving, reallocating those resources towards veterans assistance and U.S. because the greatest cause of death for Americans is COVID and a lack of health care, not Al-Shabaab, who doesn't even have international aims. They have local aims. So let's just cut this out right now. Thank you.